All right, we're back in New York for the first time in 2020. Feel pretty good about it. Pretty excited. Excuse me. Yeah, they're looking at the, they're looking at the camera. So this is part one of the trip. You're gonna be in New York, couch surfing for about a week. Persons at a time. Keep walking. Do not push. Caution. Also, huge shout out to Flora's dad because he lent me this jacket, and it's pretty cold here. I left all my winter stuff in Massachusetts. Thank you very much. I just realized my mic was unplugged the entire time, so huge bummer. That audio probably sucks. Hey, how's it going? Hi, buddy. How's it going? Doing well. Thank you very much. Oh. Scratch my suitcase. There he is. <laughs> Get up there. Yes. Maybe not today. Okay, we've got some crazy colors with the lights going on right now, but we are at the assemblage at John Street in Fida, New York. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, thank you. Got Biohack the World coming up. Haven't been to this in two months now. We're gonna sit down with David after the show. Before the show though, I'm gonna get a quick massage. I've never been in this massage chair, but it looks awesome. That thing is wild. Wow. I mean, it even stretches you out. I've never been in a massage chair like that. That is crazy. It's pretty fun though. I'm totally down to do that again. I think I knocked out pretty hard. All right, back to work. Well, look who it is. I am late, but I made it. Yeah, yeah, up top. I, uh. Oh, I, uh I'm gonna disappear for a second. Okay, you. goodbye. Awesome. Health and wellness is different from academia. It's an industry that is growing at exponential rates. As people start realizing that our health is more than just our pathologies, precancerous cells are in all of us all the time. But our body knows how to recognize them and how to get rid of them. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage, Dr. Jerry Frizzell. I actually had three dentists look at it, and all the dentists said it's fine. And I said, did they do a 3D cone beam? So she comes to New York, she gets the cone beam, but she has a giant infection around this lower molar, which is directly connected to her left lung. We take it out, we disinfect it. Five weeks later, she goes to Baylor University for her pre-surgical exam. They found the tumor shrunk to one third the size. And our bodies have this amazing divine ability to self-regulate and heal. And that's it. All right, thank you so much. Dr. Jerry Curzola, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so <clears throat> one of the things I was really looking forward to coming back to New York was hanging out with David. You haven't met David yet, but in my adult life, probably the most influential person I have ever met, and I am very, very grateful to say that he is one of my closest and best friends. When I met David, we met at actually the, the blockchain conference that I got this t-shirt at, and that's where he first started introducing biohacking to me. Yes. And ever since then, my life has totally changed. I'm much healthier, much happier, more giving, more optimistic. Oh, wow, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate so, that. I wanted to share with you what David has shared with me, at least a little bit, for new people who, like myself when you first met me who aren't familiar with biohacking. What are five things that they could do to make themselves better? All right, that's a good, great question. So biohacking is the art and science of curating your environments, your biology to optimize your neurocognition, uh, physical fitness. So one of my favorite biohacks that I think you took on pretty much right away was intermittent fasting. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I did it. Um, I did the extreme version. Actually, right. to be clear, you told me that I needed to do one meal a day. It wasn't like, oh, do an eight-hour window. You, well, you didn't just I like, just tell you that that's what I did? Yeah, you're like, I just did one meal a day. I was like, all right, f yeah. it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I did it's like, it. Oh, the warrior diet. So back in 2018, the first 90 days of 2018, I did the warrior diet, which is a time-restricted feeding window of four hours every single day. So I would fast all the way until 4 p.m. and then I would only eat between the hours of four and eight. PM. Um, and I just told you that story and then you were like, okay, let me try that. So yep. Yep. you're really good at that. You're really good at picking up and trying doing like cool DIY health hacks. Mm. Yeah. Kudos. Thanks. For, I try for going through all that. And then the other one was CrossFit, right? So you yeah. did, I also told you a story how I did 66 days of CrossFit yeah. and then you went and did 90 days of CrossFit. Yeah. The 90, yeah. The yeah. 90 was actually still inspired by you because you said that it took 90 days to build a habit. Yeah. Uh, like, or there was a range, like 66 yeah. was average and 90 was on the the higher end. And I looked uh, it up. And yeah. It's true. Yeah. Like there are studies that say it's like the higher end to build a habit is about 90 days. So I did 90 days and it was yeah. awesome. I also did it on social media. Some of you might have followed actually on uh, Instagram. So high intensity interval training is my second biggest hack. But then the variety of hit training that we like is obviously CrossFit because right. it's a competitive sport. And that adds a whole new other element that makes hit training so much more effective, so much more fun. You could either be biohacking out of fear or you could be biohacking out of pure joy. Like, let me, how can I become a better athlete? Try to figure out yeah. my sleep hacks, my food hack. I, I think the third one would be sleep. Mm, right because yeah. we got the whoop band yeah. and the whoop band was supposed to track our cardiovascular strain but also more importantly our recovery score yeah right to track our sleep how Emphasizing much deep recovery. sleep are we getting yeah. how much REM sleep are we getting mm -hmm. right heart rate variability yeah, yeah wanna... definitely I would say so and that was probably the most important one for me because I had the total opposite perspective anyone who knew me in college I went to bed at 5 p.m., got up at 6.30 p.m., stayed up till 5 a.m., went to sleep at 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., and that was all the sleep that I got. All the other hours of the day, I was working. I was definitely in the mindset that sleep was something I needed to sacrifice in order to succeed. And then this taught me that that was totally not the case. Also, the Whoop Band was a gift from David. So It was a Christmas gift. Yeah, it? it was. Yeah. Yeah, which is a pretty fantastic gift. And... I've been wearing it ever since. I think nutrition definitely is up there. Getting sugar and refined carbohydrates out of our diet, mm -hmm. eating whole foods, eating high quality animal protein. Mm -hmm. So nutrition is a big thing. For the most part, the main ingredients of most meals are, are the meats and the veggies and just sourcing them properly. Yeah. Right? And like the oils. Oh yeah. The oils. Yeah, the oils. So probably the easiest switch that will instantly make people healthier is swapping out. If you have vegetable oil, if you have canola oil, getting rid of that mm -hmm. and using either single source olive oil or avocado oil. Yeah, extra virgin olive oil, single mm -hmm. source. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Should be everyone's go-to. This is another really, really easy thing to do. It's effortless and it's taking the ancestral supplements, grass-fed, grass-finished beef <laughs> liver or organs. Right. Because the organ meats, as you explained to me, was that they are the most nutrient dense. So nutrient dense. Much more so than the lean muscle tissue that right. you're eating. The American diet just does not understand the value <laughs> of, of organ meats. Some do, so it's called yeah. offal, right? O-F-F-A-L, and you can look that up. You can look for some of the, the best offal restaurants in your town. Uh, there are a few in New York City that we can go to. The last, the final pillar would be mindset. You need to be a little crazy and yeah. you have to be super That's disciplined yes. about your habits and all your behavior needs to be congruent to your goal. That sounded pretty daunting, but I'm going to also share two tidbits that I like to use to practice discipline. One thing is, even though you have the long goal in mind, setting short goals and making it so it's like, I, I'm not setting a plan now for the rest of my life, I'm gonna be doing this every single day. What I do instead is I set a goal for a certain duration, maybe it's like seven days, and then I'm gonna take notes on how it goes, and then after seven days, I'll modify it. The idea is that I'm always trying to improve it, because I've never seen anyone get something right the first time. So there's no need or sense in locking yourself into something the first time you do it. So just do it, do it for seven days or do it for four days and see how it goes, make some adjustments and just keep building. Discipline tip number two, trying to make 
as many decisions as possible binary decisions, either a yes or a no. There's no gray area, just define it clearly. For me, the easiest thing was doing one meal a day. For that time period, I could say yes. Any other hour, it was no. No matter what it was, what I learned during that time was that I could say no to anything. So I learned how to say no to sugar, and you just learn to say no to all the things you shouldn't be having anyway. It just makes it so much easier when you switch to something where you are intentionally trying to be healthier, you're mindfully eating, then you already have the discipline of saying, and the practice of saying no to the things you don't want to eat anymore. Eating so. like an adult, case in point. So here are the main takeaways, yeah. the five tips. Number one, time-restricted feeding. Number two, hit training. Hit training. Number three is going to be getting proper sleep, adequate recovery. Number four is going to be nutrition and figuring out what is the best diet for you. Number five is going to be mindset. Anything in life requires the right attitude. So true. Yeah, attitude. That's a great one to end on too. Dang. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.